Hey, guys. Happy Monday. Start of the week. You know, thanks for taking my call. Anytime. You know, hey, these, hey, these drafts, look, they're always a crapshoot, right? So it's hard to say, you know, feel a certain way about a draft or if they're right or wrong. But I just feel like the Niners, they make it harder than it needs to be. They're good at what they do, but sometimes they make it harder than it needs to be. I think at 31, we could have got much better value. You know, drafting the guy, a receiver, who's probably fourth on the depth chart right now, currently speaking, I don't think that's the ideal way to go about it. I think Jackson Powers would have been a great, great pick right there. Kind of like where the Chiefs got Creed Humphrey. You know, a center slash guard is not a second position, but when you're picking in the 30s, that's sometimes where they, they just fall and you get an all-pro caliber player. And I think that would have been a great spot for that. You know, and it's like, we always have to, like, talk ourselves into these 49er picks. You know, when we got Pettis, oh, he's going to be a great kick returner. Or he's, he's great in the open field. That's going to be great for Shanahan. And I feel the same way with this receiver. Like, nobody really saw us picking him. But now that we picked him, I feel like we're trying to talk ourselves into, oh, that's a great pick. As where, you know, a lot of these uh, kind of mock drafts and these pundits had these players ranked much higher that we still could have got. Cooper... Dijon would have been a great pick. I mean, a lot of people have him as a first-round talent, but, you know, we kind of go against the grain. We don't do what others think we're going to do. So, hey, they, they all might be fine players. Uh, the corner from Florida State, he might be a, a great player. I have no idea. Right. I don't know much about him. You know, they hyping him up because we picked him. But I just think the Niners, they, they you know, we could have asked CD, but we took IU. You know, CD was the more decorated player, but we took IU. It's, they always go against the grain. So, you know... I don't know. I, you know, again, drafting receiver, he, he looks nice, but right now he's fourth on the depth chart. Like, we're really going to keep it real. And he's still got a, he's still got a way in line behind CMC and Kittle as far as targets. So I just don't think he can help us this year. You know, and I think the plan is to try to win it this year. I think there's better value at 31. And also in, in the second round, we could have moved up because we had three uh, third round picks. Oh, we, so we could have got him and, and moved up to well, get we don't know. Team. We don't know what other teams were thinking. What we we think it's that easy. Hey, they could have just moved up and got this player and got that player and traded picks. We don't know what other teams were asking for. We don't know what other teams were valuing. We're not inside the war rooms. We're just speculating. What? We think they could move up, but we have no idea. Here's what Baldy, real quick, Shasky said about Pearsall. He loves to pick. I think you'll see it within over the course of the year, and then by next year, you know, one guy is going to be here and one guy isn't going to be here. Right now, you're gonna. It's gonna be. It should be highly competitive practices right now because I think you're gonna see the talent of Pearsall. I think everybody's gonna see yeah. it. And so this question of how they move them around, can they find a space for all of them? It's just not gonna be tolerant that guys are gonna cry, be crying for the ball. They're not getting touches. I mean, it's just the ball's gonna get spread around and it's gonna go through McCaffrey. That's not gonna change. So I'm anxious to see what that roster looks like Labor Day weekend. And if everybody that's been here is going to still be here, so he thinks he thinks well, it's going to be a good fit. Well, but but I think the part for me wasn't necessarily about um, Persall, yes. but more about he's basically saying, are, "Are we are we sure a trade isn't going to happen between now and week one?" Which I found surprising because I don't see the yeah. Niners making a move. I don't see it. You know where you wouldn't be able to well, help your team out with that draft capital until after the season. I, I don't know because that my my question was about like you know the dynamics in the locker room and just this being a run first team is everybody going to be satisfied given what the you know the well, business aspect of playing. Well, Shanahan said over the weekend that by day two or day three, they were done fielding offers for Ayuk and Debo. They heard nothing. They didn't want. They were like, we're keeping Debo. Well, Ayuk. What, what did you make of them being so open with the trade discussions? That's what they do. This is and I I love the transparency. I love it. You think the players do? Hey, it's a business. They understand it. Hey, we just lost the Super Bowl. Debo, you couldn't beat man coverage. We gave you 13 targets. You came up with three catches. Now, however, you could say the offensive line didn't block or Purdy didn't make the right throw or whatnot. You know what? The hell with that. You got to beat man. McDuffie owned him in that Super Bowl. Let's just face it. And yeah. I love Debo. Yeah. He owned him. But, so you know what? Kansas City also owned you know other what? teams. Hey, fellas, we're paying you guys a lot of money. You didn't produce at the highest level. We're going to draft guys who could help us with speed or whatnot, but you're put on notice. If you don't perform, we have out clauses and we will move on. 
This is life in the NFL, buddy. I, <laughs> Not I just, for long. I just don't... How do I put this? I don't think it's the greatest look that it was so public and out there. Well, and I don't know if they did that by design. I doubt they did. I'm sure that, the, you know, things got out that they didn't want them to get out. But it's it just if all things were being equal, I probably wouldn't have had that out there for public consumption as, as much as maybe, it felt like it was out there. Maybe they're just playing people for fools. <laughs> maybe they're... So Diana Rossini of The Athletic spoke to Debo over the weekend, yep. and this is what he had to say, quote, I know what's going on, but it is what it is. I'm good staying with them. I'm chilling. That was Debo talking to the yep. Niners. I mean, who knows Yeah, what that, how he said that. You well, know what he I mean? says it in a Debo, very monotone. Yeah. Doesn't say much away. That's they Debo. know. They know. Hey, it was out there. It was out there. We're open for business. But that not that how businesses are successful? You don't not pick up the phone, right? Yeah, but you don't tell your, I mean, I agree. You pick up the phone, but you don't tell people way below you like, hey, hey we were thinking about chopping you, but, you know, right. we kept you around. No. Like, now that person's no. got it in their head. So I think for, it's a slippery slope. For the right price, for the right price, you would have been moved. Well, everyone knows that. <laughs> That's what it was. Now we go back to the drawing board. We continue to negotiate with Brendan I. You can bring them back. I just... At the end of the day, I'm just happy both of those guys are still here. No, I would agree with that. They're both still here after all the rumors, and I don't know where the rumors came from. Now, I know they were open saying, hey, we're listening to phone calls. It is. I'm not mad at that. I'm actually not mad at that. As fans, we we'll always complain when they don't say anything, and we want to know. Like, when they, when, they keep, when they keep things close to the vest, uh -huh. and, you're, and sometimes as fans, we're like, well, just tell us. We want to know this, and we pay a lot of money for this. We want to know this. Well, then when they let us know, about potential trade rumors, we sit back and we say, well, we don't really like that. Well, no, letting the fans know about trade is fine. I'm talking about the human element of going back into that locker room, but like, you're my guy. Even though we tried to trade you, we didn't get exactly no. what we were looking for, but you're my guy. No, that's why you I have, think it's difficult. When you have constant communication, it's okay. Lynch has said he's had constant communication with Brendan Ayuk. They've had constant communication with Debo. I'm cool with that. As long as they're communicating with the players. And Debo said it to know. Diana Rossini. I'm aware of what's going on. I'm in the loop. Yeah. It is what it is. I, I just, I'm chilling. Yeah, see, like, I, I get the, the, the conversation. In a, in a perfect world, which doesn't exist, but in a perfect world, I would probably try to be a little more tight-lipped on, on how much we're shopping players out there because it just it, it probably causes more harm if you're not going to execute a trade than good. Well, I think the media kind of overblew it, too. Well, that's... That's an element get, of it. When you no get doubt. people writing columns and it start talking and start and speculating, fans and love then, trades. And then, and then and then you're dead wrong when you pivot and you say, "Hey, well, they're actually going to trade this player." And then none of the players, none of the players get traded. Now you look like a fool. Well, I actually, it's uh, you know, forget what you look like. I found it quite interesting that both Ayuk and Debo, outside of San Francisco, aren't viewed the way. Niner fans view them because I know you were saying that uh, I don't think we respect. No, I think we do, and I think other people don't view Debo Samuel the way we do because of. And I think this goes back to Shanahan. Shanahan's so good at what he does. Debo really only works well, in a couple of places, well, I and think, this is one of them. But I only I also think too though you're so close to the NFL draft and teams have their draft board set up and they know the money element and they're like, damn, the Forty ers just went to the Super Bowl. Why are they trying to trade Debo? Why are they trying to? trade Brendan Ayuk and they're probably thinking no we're not going to give these guys compensation because they know what to do with that compensation we're not going to do that mm, and bite yeah. the bullet for some money yeah. this is a receiver rich class for the teams that need it wide receivers like Jacksonville for example Jacksonville we could control Brian Thomas Jr. on a rookie contract bring him down here to Jacksonville we already know K Christian Kirk is our number mm -hmm. one receiver we still have Evan Ingram we're good here yeah but see that you're making my point from months back there are like a handful of guys at the dot top who people will trade first round picks for and extend Tyreek Hill as an example, uh, Devontae Adams as an example, and they will pay them. You know, like, and I, not that I'm hesitant to pay IU or anything. It's just like, mm, it's, that's interesting to know that other teams don't view him in that same upper echelon, you know, top of the market status. I find that interesting. Well, from a business standpoint. From a, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. But like, Number one picks are premium, premium. They're they are they are the way guys are getting moved. And the Niners probably said too, we're not settling for a Stephon Diggs trade. We're not settling for any of these trades. Diggs was so, traded originally you know, for first, and then Buffalo about this past, threw the money I'm talking at about him this past, this past yeah. season, this past season where he got traded to Houston after another productive season. In